It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. My guest, Jennifer Toledo, had an experience. Jennifer, uh, this is so phenomenal. You were in Africa uh, in a remote village uh, and you were about ready to die. <laughs> and you had a mysterious guest come in and perform surgery from the invisible world. But at two years of age, you had an encounter with the Messiah of Israel. Tell me about that. Yeah, I was um, just a young child. I was scared, you know, and would cry at night. And one night I had an experience where I just saw Jesus come into my room. And he just sat on my bed and, and he just said, you don't need to cry. And he said, I'll, you know, I'll take care of you. And he just sat there and it just brought absolute peace to me. My parents were shocked because I was screaming and then I just suddenly stopped. and came running out and was like, did you guys see Jesus? And they were like, what in the world is yeah. she talking about? Yeah, yeah, you know, if that if I had had such an encounter, as you described, my mind would go back to it often over mm -hmm. the years. Does yours? Yeah, I think more than my mind, it's my heart. Just that place of peace of, I remember just that peace of him sitting there next to me and what I felt of just absolute confidence. And he, I went to sleep and I just commonly can go there and just remember him sitting next to my bed whenever I'm stressing out or whatever and knowing that he's just looking after me. And your mom got a divorce mm -hmm. uh, when you were young and you watched God perform miracles. For instance, tell me about the red car. Oh my goodness. My mom taught us from a young age that God was our father and just to really treat him like our father and and go to him with our needs and just very practically he's not just theory but he's a real dad and um, you know one time we didn't have a car and my mom used to make us stand with her at the window and she would look out into the driveway and she'd say do you, do you see my red car sitting there and we'd like make fun of her and we'd be like what are you talking about mom there's no red car and and she'd just say oh just have faith I just know that God's gonna provide us a car and and she goes, and I, I told God, you know, my first choice is a red car. And we were like, okay, Mom. And um, sure enough, um, a short time later, there was a knock on our door. We went and opened the door, and it was a relative we hadn't seen in a long time. And they said, you know, this is going to sound crazy, but we've never done anything like this, but we just feel like we're to give you our car. They told my mom this. And my mom was like, oh, my goodness. And we ran to the window and we looked and parked in our driveway is this red car that they had given. How my excited mom. were you? We were so excited. We were like, <laughs> oh, my gosh, God's so good. He I, I mean, but God provided food yeah. and all sorts of things. And then yeah. there was a day in which you journaled a, almost a warning from God. Tell me about that in your diary. Yeah, I, um, you know, just one of my times of just praying, I, I began to just feel God speaking to my heart. And he just said, um, you know, I, I'm inviting you on this crazy mission, this crazy adventure with me. It's going to be very costly. It's going to be very lonely. It's going to be very hard. It's going to cost you everything. But if you will say yes to my, my highest for you, you know, putting down what's comfortable to really pursuing what's on his heart, if you'll do that, this is about spiritual promotion. This is about gaining authority. It's going to be worth it. Okay, so you get on a plane to go to Africa. <laughs> How much money did you have? Who went with you? What kind of preparation did you have? Um, negative, negative, and negative. I had no how does money. A, how does a young woman like that go to Africa alone without money? How? No, it's it's Give me absolutely. a break. What did your mother say? <laughs> My mother was freaking out, um, hands down. But I knew God had, had said to do this. I knew this was the invitation. And I went by myself. I was 21 years old. I had no money. I had very few connections and ended up in um, northern Kenya, very remote desert, all by myself. And the, the surroundings there were horrific. I mean, it was drought, war, famine, you know, violence, death. It was crazy. Sid. It was absolutely crazy, but I knew it was God. And uh, you found out uh, that it was such a spiritual desert. It was yeah. because the Turkana tribe had made a covenant with Satan thousands of years ago. Right. You know, when I thought it really couldn't get worse, I realized <sighs> that that the entire tribe was in blood covenants with Satan. And I just cried and was like, what am I doing here? I'm just nobody. You know, why in the world? What, what can I do? I'm totally inadequate. And God spoke to me. He said, you know what? You are completely inadequate. Don't forget, that's your greatest strength. 
And then he asked me an interesting question. He said, do you believe that I'm the God that uses David's to bring down Goliath? And that was, you know, in other words, do you believe that I can use simple people to do great things? It's about me. It's not about you. And I was like, okay, God, I know that you love these people, and I know you want to bring restoration to this land. So we began to just pray and ask God for, for strategy for that land. All right, so God gives you a supernatural strategy, but with the strategy comes a warning. What yes. was the warning? Well, God had given us a strategy to see breakthrough come. Um, but Basically, he, in a nutshell, yeah. what was the strategy? The strategy was to gather all the leaders together of the tribe and um, have them corporately repent and, and break the covenant with the enemy. But what he said was the, way, the only way out of this blood covenant is that the tribe has to enter into a stronger blood covenant. And the only stronger blood covenant is covenants with Jesus. And, and what so, was the warning that you got? So the warning I got was God said this is awesome I want you to do this but knowing if you do the enemy has asked to take your life Satan is very angry doesn't want these people out of bondage and wants to take your life and I didn't know what that meant other than I knew it was serious um, I really prayed about it and I just I said okay God Satan can't steal my life I will lay my life down for this tribe if this is what you've sent me to do but my life is in your hands I trust you and um, but 24 yeah. hours later she finds herself dying in a remote village <laughs> with no 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 medical help nothing alone in the middle of africa don't go away we'll be right back after this word Aww.